twisted. Rain your love now, won't you let, let it rain? Oh my God. Ooh. Okay. Y'all listen. Listen, listen, listen. This is too thick. If, if there's anybody that's in any kind of denial that the old world got to go out with a bang and come in with a new one, then these next few little stories, I'm going to kind of do it like a magazine type because I got I don't want to do these videos, but I got it. I'm just going to let you hear the headlines of what's going on in your world, <laughs> your world today. y'all. Here's the first one. This is not good. I mean, Antifa gunman was wanted for shooting. I mean, excuse me. Antifa gunman wanted for shooting dead pro-Trump activist in Portland is killed in a shootout with federal marshals after he opened fire with an assault rifle. That's the Antifa man. Uh, he, they killed him. So he. Okay. Well, okay. All right. Now. This right here is pathetic. Why should I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers. Donald Trump denies report that he canceled visit to U.S. War Cemetery in France because he thought the Marines were suckers for getting killed and because the rain would ruin his hair. Your hair already ruined without the rain. Now, he vehemently denies this claim. That he referred to American dead now as losers, okay, and suckers. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. Trump. I'm sorry, you big dumb. It's not hard for people to believe that you said that after how you smeared John McCain. After you, you know, I I really, really want to be um um mad at uh John McCain. I know John McCain, um hired somebody that I know <laughs> and moved him out to Arizona, James Harris. And, uh, but anyway, let me get, get come from there. I know how Donald Trump um, did him. That was so cold. You know, say what you want to say about John McCain, but I mean, come on. He, the guy is a war hero, right? But not according to Donald Trump. And then he's got the nerve. And the people are so crazy. They got the nerve to let him go out there and hug flags, <laughs> do all this stuff. And he's such a hypocrite. He cannot be honest. He's a narcissist. Uh, a malignant. He probably said it. He don't want to go out there with no suckers and no damn losers. And, they, and plus, he's going to mess up his orange hair, his makeup, his orange hair. In his freaked out face, y'all, you ought to quit. That's what I was laughing about. Now, this right here is kind of sad. Um, rapper Salento is arrested for attacking two strangers with a hatchet after entering into the wrong L.A. home and faces up to six years in prison if convicted. Nobody got killed. He went to the wrong house. I mean, you got people still on the run. I mean, still out there free when they shoot people up in their house or murder them. You know, so come on. It was a mistake. Right? But some of the madness that uh, Donald Trump has uh, conjured up in America is this cop car plow through the crowd of a black Lives Matter supporters in Times Square. Demonstrators in New York City are injured as they protest the death of Daniel Prude, who was suffocated by the cops with a spit hood. And that's as violence breaks out in Rochester, where it happened. So um, now the white supremacists are driving through crowds and they continue to do it because they've pretty much gotten the okay from the president that it's okay to do this kind of stuff. You know?
And I just want y'all to know that, um, well, the Rochester mayor suspended the officers involved in the fatal March arrest of Daniel Prude. So, um, this, this happened, I guess, back here in March. And, um, you know, they're protesting it. And this is what happened because they are protesting the march. Uh, people are driving through the crowds. Um, it's just disturbing. Very disturbing. Now, I want to know how many of y'all thought Rachel Dolezal was the only person that ever uh, went for broke? Who passed for black? Well, right now we got an African-American history professor at GWU who pretended to be black is pictured in a yearbook of fee paying school where she bo she boycotted the prom and planned a flag burning. As neighbor says, disgraced academic called her white trash. Damn. Now this has got to be a crazy story. Jessica Krug, 38, that's what I'm saying. Y'all get to do it. <laughs> I ain't going to go there because I know black people that pass for white too. Those, those Creoles and that, you know. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, Jessica Krug, 38, revealed on Thursday she has lied about being black her entire career and admitted to receiving her, deceiving her friends and colleagues. She said in a blog post that she is white, Jewish, and raised in Kansas City. Now DailyMail.com can exclusively reveal how Krug went to the exclusive Barstow School in Kansas City where she was described as very political. I am mad at you. A former classmate told DailyMail.com that Krug identified as a white Jewish girl. I ain't mad at, um, by the way, Rachel Dolezal either. You know, not y'all mad at me because I'm not mad at them. <laughs> they said Krug boycotted prom and planned a flag burning gra um, graduating in 1999. Her current neighbor in the Bronx told the Daily Mail that Krug would call her white trash. <laughs> and tell her neighbor that she was gentrifying the neighborhood. Yeah. I'm gentrifying the neighborhood. And she really was white. So she was a reverse Bigsby. What's his name? Sitting on the porch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, she said in a blog post titled The Truth and the Anti-Black Violence of My Lies that she is white Jewish and was raised in Kansas City. For the better part of my adult life, every move I made, every relationship I've formed has been rooted in the napalm toxic soil of lies, she wrote. Now, the Daily Mail can exclusively reveal how Krug went to the exclusive Barstow School in Kansas City, where she was described as a very political, well, she was described as very political and is said to have been identified as a white Jewish girl. Y'all don't know. It takes a lot to pull off a different identity. I know. Now, DailyMail.com can exclusively reveal how Krug went to the exclusive Barstow School, where she was described again as very political. One of her former peers, who did not want to be named, said she boycotted. Uh, she planned a, a flag burning uh, thing at the school. And she described herself as an unrepentant, unreformed child of the hood. Her current neighbor in the Bronx, Anna Anderson, told the Daily Mail that Krug would call her white trash and tell Anderson she was gentrifying the neighborhood by going running. Damn. Following the dispute over their bikes, Anderson said to uh, Krug, asked her, do you know what the police do to black people like me? 
Anderson told the Daily Mail, she called me white trash. I'm still stuck on that. That's how ironic. <laughs> in a video posted online in June of this year, under her activist uh, uh, synonym, um, Jessica La Bambalera Krug denounced all these white New Yorkers who waited four hours with us to be able to speak and then did not yield their time for black and brown indigenous New York. She adds, much power to all my siblings who were standing up, my black and brown siblings who were standing. Her book, Fugitive Modernites, includes the acknowledgement of to my ancestors, unknown, unnamed, who bled life into a future they had no reason to believe or could believe and should exist. Those whose names I cannot say for their own safety, whether in my barrio in Angola or in Brazil. Crook's online confession is reminiscent of the scandal involving Rachel Dolezal, a former NAACP leader in Washington State who was exposed in 2015 as a white woman pretending to be black. Krug, who has a PhD, described herself as a cultural leech and a coward. She has taken financial support from the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Damn, the Guardian reports. In 2009, she is understood to have been uh, award as Fulbright Hayes Doctoral Dissertation Research Abroad Fellowship. Wow. In her medium post, Crook said, I have thought about ending these many lies many times over many years, but my cowardice has always been more powerful than my ethics. I know right from wrong. I know history. I know power. And I'm a coward. There is no ignorance, no innocence, nothing to claim, nothing to defend. I have moved wrong in every way for years. Now that took a lot of courage. And this this resonated with me um, for a lot of reasons. Go back and look at some of my old videos. You'll see. You should absolutely cancel me. And I absolutely cancel myself. I have built my life on a violent, anti Black lie. I have lied in every breath I have taken. I have not lived a double life. There is no parallel form of my adulthood connected to, this, to white power or white community or an alternative white identity. I have lived this life fully, completely, with no exit plan or strategy. I have built only this life, a life within which I have operated with a radical sense of ethics, of right and wrong, with rage rooted in black power and ideology, which every person should support, but to which I have no possible claim as my own. She acknowledged that it would be unlikely that she could repair any relationship that she has made given the extent of her lies. Hmm. I have burned every bridge and have no relationship, uh, no expectation that any of my relationships are flame resistant. I would never ask for nor expect forgiveness. I ask for it. That's the only place where me and you probably differ. Um, sometimes, um, you know, you can do things and you can go too far. And you should know, um, you should ask for forgiveness. Whether you get it or not, you should ask for it. Uh, for the people that trusted you and the people that you betrayed, you owe them that. So I did it. It was one of the hardest things I had to do in my life. To everyone, anyway, they teach you that in Alcohol Anonymous. They teach you that in Cocaine Anonymous. They teach you that in, you know, AA, any of it. To everyone who trusted me, who fought for me, who vouched for me, 
who love me, who is feeling shock and betrayal and rage and bone marrow, deep hurt and confusion, violation in this world and beyond. I beg you, please do not question your own judgment or doubt yourself. You were not naive. I was audaciously deceptive. I have a very clear, loud conscience, but I have acted as if I had none. I gaslit you. I beg for your compassion and love, for my isolation and loneliness, real and raw feelings, but born of the avalanche of deceit. In her blog post, Krug said that she has battled unaddressed mental health demons her entire life, and she was first assumed um, a false identity as a child. She wrote that her mental health issues could never explain or justify why she pretended to be black. She says, when I was a teenager fleeing trauma, I could just run away to a new place and become a new person. But this isn't trauma that anyone imposed on me. This is the harm that I have enacted onto so many others. There is nowhere now to run. I have ended the life I had no right to live in the first place. No white person, no non-black person has the right to claim proximity to or belonging to a black community by virtue of abuse, trauma, or non-acceptance, or non-belonging into the, a white community. The abuse within and alienation from my birth family and my and society are no one's burden but my own and mine alone to address. Black people and black communities have no obligation to harbor the refuse. Um, I mean, yeah, to harbor the refuse of non-black societies. I have done this. I know it was wrong, and I have done this. Krug has been teaching classes on African-American history at George Washington University since 2012. Her biography page on the university website says that she also specializes uh, in subjects including Latin America, Africa, imperialism, and colonialism. She has a PhD from the University of Madison. That's right here. According to uh, George Washington, Crook has also written several books um, and essays on blackness and black culture. Some of the outlets who have published her work started deleting the post on Thursday after her revelations. A George Washington University spokesman said that they are aware of the post and are looking further into the situation, adding, um, we cannot comment further on uh, personal matters. Following the revelations in her post, Krug has since slammed, been slammed on Twitter by several black writers and scholars whom she had contact with all throughout her career. Harry Zayed, a black author and screenwriter claimed that she had only pinned the post because she had been found out. Mm. Wow. Well, another twi uh, Twitter user, Neil Davidson, says he started to uh, grad school in history at UW-Madison around the same time as Jessica Krug. Everyone I knew suspected she was full of shit. But no one was sure of what to do about it. In a series of scathing tweets, Ziad uh, said he considered a crook to be a friend until she called him a few hours prior to the medium post of being published to confess. Jessica Krug is someone I called a friend up until this morning when she gave me a call admitting to everything that was written here. She didn't do it out of benevolence. 
She did it because she had been found out. For years, I defended her work. And, um, and her, from her own um, self-loathing, I did it despite warnings from other black friends, from those who said she wasn't black enough, even if they could accept that she was black, and from my own mind and body. I always knew there was something off. It was a persistent negativity and jealousy, her always needing to prove her authenticity and at the expense of everything and everyone else. So I just kept her at an arm's length but still close, close enough that she could harm black people around me. So um, I owe them apologies. Mm. Wow. So the race baiter <clears throat> website, uh, no, I mean, it's a, keeping a black space is safe is our highest priority, and we failed this time, but we will do better. Jessica Krug's words have been removed from our platform, and we will welcome any other suggestions for better vetting and elevating writers committed to the liberation of black people. Wow. What y'all think about that? What do y'all think about this lady who decided to pull a Rachel Dolezal and pick up and claim a black identity and taught African American history? What y'all think about that? I, I got nothing else to say, but leave your comments below. Thank you.